Okay, we have a pop quiz. Whose name means honeybee? Also, who has their own? <laughs> Join us and find out. God bless you and welcome back to Heart Ministry Radio Network and the Doors to Your Heart. I am your host Brenda Divers and we are still dancing in the desert. There was a little quiz before the show came on. Did you get the answer? Whose name meant honeybee and had their own palm? Deborah, right? I know you got it. I know you did. And she is certainly one of my favorite people to talk about in the Bible. Tonight we are dancing in the desert with Deborah. And she lives in there, right? <laughs> so um, this is such a wonderful, um, empowering, I think, um, lesson. I just got so much out of it. And I thank God for allowing us to have his word right here. where We could read it um, at any time. So we are going to be in Judges. If you can join me in the book of Judges, we're actually in chapter four of Judges. And, you know, it, it opens up where, you know, the children of Israel are being oppressed again because they walked away from the Lord. Certainly when we walk away from the Lord, there are some consequences that follow, right? So they walked away again and they were oppressed by a leader named Sisera. And Sisera had about 900 chariots of iron and he oppressed the children of Israel for about 20 years or so. So the Lord raised up a judge, another judge. And this time it was a female judge and her name was Deborah. So she was appointed by God. And the interesting thing about Deborah is that she had three positions that we know about. She was a wife, right? And first, I just thought it was so sweet. Her name means honeybee. A strong woman like that, her name means honeybee. And why do we think her name was honeybee, right? What are some of the characteristics of a honeybee, right? Honey is sweet. And there is a way that God has given women and women in leadership. There is a way that he gives us to lead sweetly. Right? We don't lead like men. We're not men, we're women. And he gives us something totally different. And that means, again, her name was Honeybee. And another characteristic about a honeybee is what? They work together. They are working all the time for one goal. What? They're feeding their queen. They're, you know, getting everything together and they're just working. And certainly there's a hum there is harmony that comes out of working together, right? For the cause of Christ. So Deborah was appointed by God, one, as a judge. She was a wife, right? And her husband's name was Lapido. And his name means burning torch. I love names and what they mean, right? Burning torch. So he had a powerful wife and his name was burning torch. So I'm sure he had to be secure in who he was and he carried that light, he shined that light for his wife. Burning torch was his name. And that's something, nothing in this word is an accident. You are not an accident. I am not an accident. Anything that God breathes on is intentional. So we have Deborah, honeybee. Then we have her husband, Lapidoth, is um, burning torch. So the other thing that Deborah was, was a prophetess. She had two appointments by God, specifically, right? Well, three, she was a wife, she was a judge, and she was a prophet. 
And it's just so interesting how these two unique um, positions were held by one person in chapter four, and that was Deborah. So let's start reading at about verse, chap verse four. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidus, we said that she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under, a, under the palm of Deborah between, between Ramoth and Bethel in the Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And <laughs> again, women do things differently, don't they? When I read this for the first time, I think I laughed. I said, Deborah was not sitting out in the plane <laughs> while she was presenting judgment. She was sitting under the shade of a palm, <laughs> right? And they said it was the date palm. Beautiful, beautiful tree. So that's where she, the men would come to her for judgment, you know, for civil suits and all that kind of thing. They came to the judge for that. And she sat under her palm and they came to her for judgment. I'm sure she was a classy lady. I'm so, so sure she was. <laughs> so, as we go on, in verse 6, she goes and, and calls for Barak. Barak, Barak was the, the, the chief. He was the head of the armies, right? And he, she called for him because it was she got a word from the Lord that it was time to go up against Sisera. So Barak means lightning, right? So we have honeybee. We have burning torch and we have lightning. What combination, right? So she calls for him and she's, because she is a prophet, the prophets what? Carried the word of the Lord. So she had, again, she sat and she sat in judgment of the people of Israel and she also carried the word of the Lord. What a responsibility. What an anointing had to be upon her. And just know, women, as we are going through and you feel this call on your life and sometimes you feel a heaviness because maybe not everybody understands what God is doing, just know he's appointed you for a reason and he will make your way clear, right? You don't have to shout from the rooftops, I'm anointed. You know, you don't have to break down the doors. God will do that. He will appoint you and anoint you and make a way for you. And I, I, you know, we talk to women all the time who are powerful, powerful in their own right, that God has given them so many gifts. And they're frustrated because they, you know, may be in a situation where they, they don't think they can display the anointing that God has given them because people may not accept it. You know, take heart today and know that if, if God has given you this special anointing, he has made a way for you. So trust God. Don't move before he tells you right? But trust him that the thing he has given your heart to do, he will make room for it, right? So again, now again, she called Barak and she said, it's time to go, you know, gather 10,000 men. It's time to go up against Sisera. The Lord is going to give you in his hand. He's going to deliver the children of Israel out of the oppression of Sisera. And when Barak comes to her, He's, you know, she tells him what he needs to do. And she, he says to her, if you don't go, then I'm not going to go. <laughs> if you go with me, then I will go. And I'm sure you have heard lesson after lesson, sermon after sermon about Barack and why he had to, you know, wouldn't go out to battle with, you know, unless his, unless Deborah was there, unless a woman was there. And they really paint him as this weak man because he wouldn't go out to battle without a woman but he was the captain of the host right and he is even mentioned a few times in in the in the scripture Hebrews chapter 11 he's mentioned in the heroes of faith in chapter 12 if he was this person that he has been um, acclaimed to be this weak-minded man who needed his mommy to go to battle with him do you think he would have been listed in the annals of time for a man of faith? He knew what, what battle was about. And this man, Sisera, had oppressed the children of Israel for 20 years because he had so much behind him. He had 900 chariots of iron. 
And what is 900 chariots of iron against foot soldiers? Right? So he knew what he was up against. And he also knew that because Deborah operated in what? A prophet, she carried the word of the Lord. So I'm not going to battle without the word of the Lord. <laughs> he was not weak. He was wise. How about that? Let's consider that. He was a wise man, knowing that I'm not going up against this formidable enemy without the word of the Lord. So as a prophet, as a judge, you know, she worked outside of the house, <laughs> right? And of course, in these times, she was caught, there was some travel involved. So she had a powerful job. You know, and I remember when I had a job that I had to do a lot of travel. For me, that was very daunting, you know, and that could be stressful, you know, on this travel, getting in planes, getting off planes, traveling here, traveling there, you know, and there's there are some things that come with that. But she went and she had a husband at home, right? She still had a burning torch. So there had to be some harmony, right? God is not the author of confusion. So again, if you are finding yourself, ladies, in this situation where there's so many things happening, you have a, drive, a job that you have to travel, right? You have responsibilities at home. God is not the author of confusion. So when you have all of these things that need to be addressed, you simply what? Ask God for wisdom. And he said if you asked him that he would give it to you. So don't fret over all these things that you think you're called to do. No, if God has called you to it, he will make your way straight. He will make those paths straight. So get quiet before him. Because, you know, again, there are some powerful women out here. I know some powerful women. And there are anointing that is strong upon your life. And just know, if God put that anointing there, he knew that he could trust you in it. And he's already made your way straight. So don't fret. Take the time to get quiet before him and to ask him what he needs you to do. Ask him, how do I do all this? How do I be mother and wife and all of these things that you've called me to do? How do I do that? And if you simply ask him, he will tell you. Get before your father. Again, he does not want us to fail. He did not give you all of this to fail. He gave you this to bless his name and to bless his people. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and talk about this battle and, and everything that happened. This is exciting, isn't it? Don't go away. We'll hey everybody, this is Pastor Ken and this is my wife Brenda and we are the co-owners of Heart Ministry Radio Network and we want to thank you for tuning in. We are an internet radio station that streams the best in gospel music 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We also have a wonderful host of live and pre-recorded shows to open the doors to your heart. Thank you and God bless you. God bless you all. Tune in to HeartMinistryRadio.com. And don't forget to download our fabulous app on all of your mobile devices. God bless you and welcome back to Heart Ministry Radio Network and the Doors to Your Heart. We are talking about Deborah, and we know Deborah certainly has it going on. She has been anointed and appointed by God. And we left off where um, she called Barak, the chief of the host of the army, and to go up against Sisera, who had oppressed them for 20 years. And again, we know that he had, what, 900 chariots of iron. And he really, really, again, oppressed the children of God, um, of Israel, for 20 years. What? mainly because what they walked away from the Lord. There's always circumstances when we walk away from the Lord, right? So again, so she's telling Barak, who his name means lightning, that it's time to go up against Sisera and that the Lord would deliver him into his hand. But he says, I'm not going to go unless you go. And we talked a little bit about that, that it wasn't because he was weak. It was because she held the word, the, the word of the Lord, the prophet's had the word of the Lord. So he wanted the word of the Lord to go with him. And she said, you know what, I will go, but the honor of the battle won't go to you. It'll go to a woman. And do you think if he was, um, cause a lot of, again, we hear a lot of sermons about he was um, very weak or he had uh, very, 
his self-esteem was low and then you hear sometimes that he was um, very egotistical there's just so many things about Barack but do you think a man who was in the ho the host of the army of the Lord um, was weak how do you become the host of the army of the Lord the chief if you're a weak man right but he wanted the word of the Lord to go with him and even though Deborah said he wouldn't get the glory he said what come anyway for me, that means somebody who does not have a, a big ego. <laughs> he wants the battle to be won. And I think that's how we have to walk together. We don't care who is in charge or who's winning. And as long as we're moving together according to what God wants us to do, what does it matter? Right? And sometimes we have to put our egos on the, on the shelf and get together. Deborah, Deborah means what? Honeybee. And one of her, one of the characteristics is what? Working together in unity. Right? So honeybee was with the uh, the lightning rod, and this is what went on. So he said, let's go. <laughs> right? So they went to battle. And then certainly the word of the Lord came to Deborah, and she told him it was time to move, and that she would meet Sisera down at the brook and so forth. So he brought his men, and they went to battle because it was told Sisera that Barak was coming up against him. And I'm sure... You know, when you think you have the, the victory, right? You know, sometimes we get a little um, full of ourselves and so forth, right? He came down with all his chariots and we know what happened. The word of the Lord came to Deborah. She gave it to Barak and he went into battle and they defeated them. So much so that Sisera got off his chariot and ran. An interesting that interesting thing that happens. Know know that there's no coincidences with God. In our life, nothing happens by chance. God is always working on the background. He's always moving on our behalf. So if something happens that may be a little odd, it wasn't an accident. God didn't know that was going to happen. Everything in our in our life is pur purposeful. So there was. One of the, the family members, he was, he was Ken Moses's father-in-law. And he separated from, you know, the people and dwelt in the plain, right? And he had a wife. Her name was Jael, or Jael, depending on how you're pronouncing it. And so Sisera, because he was being defeated, you know, nine, how does 10,000 men on foot how do they devastate an army of 900 iron chariots? How does that happen? Right? So he knows he's, he's defeated. So he gets off of his chariot and he runs in the plain. And he comes upon Yale's home. And she invites him in. Right? And he says to her, if anybody says, have you seen me, tell him no. Right? And then she covers him, you know, with harp and so forth and he says I'm, I'm thirsty and can I have some water so she opens a skin of milk quietly goes to him and covers him so he is weary from battle at this time and because and she knew who he was <laughs> right so what she does is grab a, a tent spike or nail and you know these things are long. They have to hold to the ground. They have to hold the tents up. She comes quietly to him, takes the nail, takes the hammer, and drives it into his temples, to the ground. Someone called it a, a tent peg anointing. <laughs> right? But who has the strength and the courage to take a nail and a hammer and hammer the captain of the host head to the ground everybody has a part to play and it may seem that you're out in the desert you know you're out from all the people you know out from all the things that are familiar what can I be doing out here how can God use me I'm out here by myself there's always a reason there's always something that God wants you to learn when you're in these desert experiences. He can use you, in this case, mightily, right? Because of her, <laughs> because of Yael, the head, the host of the army that oppressed the children of Israel for 20 years was dead. 
no accident, right? We're not telling you to go out and kill anybody and all of that, <laughs> right? This, the, the lesson is that no matter where you are in your desert experience, God can use you mightily. No matter where you are. So you may say, I don't know why I'm here. It makes no sense that I am in this situation. You know, I have all of these gifts and talents and I'm here. You know, and sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes you can't even get a job with five degrees. Right? You're like, why is every door shutting? What is going on? Just know, God is still working. He's taking us the path that He we need to go according to the things we need to learn, right? And don't fight him in every step of the way. Don't fight him when you know it's God moving. Don't fight him. Although it may be painful, right? Sometimes that pruning is very painful. But if you allow the process, he will show you him. And many times you'll learn him in a new way, right? So people are praying for you. They, they see you out there. And they know that you certainly have it going on and don't understand why, you know, these things are um, coming your way. Well, we don't have to understand why. We know you're a child of God. And we know, you know, by your life, you're trying to, to walk according to his statutes. So we're praying for you that God will reveal himself to you like he never has. And I'm telling you, in those places where all that dross is being burnt off, you see God and his magnificence and his glory. You're not, you know, you're not distracted because there's nothing else there. <laughs> but you see him and you can appreciate and you can give him glory for who he is. Right? People are praying for you. Don't don't lose hope. God's got you in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all your gifts and all your anointing and all the things that he's given you. There is a time that he still has to pull you aside and he has to break some things and tear some things and remove some things so that you could what? Produce more fruit, right? So she was in the, that, in the desert. She had her part to play. She moved quietly and sweetly and nailed him, right? So she's in the annals of time, <laughs> right? But would she have thought that that would have happened? You know, we never know. We never know what's going to happen, but she had to play her part. And we know that the victory was what? Bought by the hands of a woman. And Barack Lightning, he was okay with that. He was okay with that because he knew it was God. And Deborah, the anointed and appointed woman of God, she was a judge appointed by God. She was a prophetess appointed by God. Right? So women, there are things that God gives us to do. He appoints us and he anoints us. But we don't do it like everybody else. We don't do it like a man does because he hasn't made us that way. She, she judged under the palm <laughs> with the shade. She wasn't in the plane with all that. He, you know, we do things differently. And give God glory for the differences that he makes in us. Right? He made us beautiful. He made us all special. Right? And he made us to give him glory and to bless those people around us. So I think it's really wonderful too. In chapter 5, there's a song that Deborah and Barack sing. They sing about the victory of God. And in this, in this passage, it talks about the rain that came down or the water that came down from the sky. And I think it's so interesting because how does... Foot, so how does foot soldiers overcome chariots of iron? And as many times, many times, how can they, how can they move in the mud? You know, so you kind of wonder. It's just the picture is so beautiful how God does things, right? But they sing that song, and I, oh, I wish I could hear that song. Somebody that living on the side, and they're just singing. I know it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. But we give God the glory, for He is. He is almighty. He is mighty in what? In battle. He's a good, good father. Oh, yes, he is. And I think it's just wonderful. When we talk about singing, there is a scripture in Zephaniah. And I believe it's 317. And it talks about at the end of it. And it says, God will sing over us. 
He sings over us with joy. Our God sings over us. Isn't that wonderful? If you think about it, the God of the universe takes the time to sing over us. Whew. What a God. What a God. I just sometimes when we just think about who God is and the majesty and in all he is, he chose to love us. He chose us before the very foundation of the world to be with him forever in glory. That's the kind of God we serve. Tell somebody about him. Tell somebody about the God you serve. Invite them to invite him, his son Jesus Christ, into their heart so they too can share this joy. Deborah, again, she was a bad girl. <laughs> she was something else. She was anointed and she was appointed by God. She was a judge, she was a prophetess, and she was a wife. We can do those things. We can do them. If God appoints us, if he anoints us, then we can do the things he's called us to do. Wait until he allows those doors to open for you. Pray to him for clear direction. Oh, I can't wait to I can't wait to hear the stories as to what he's doing in your life. That's our time. I'm telling you, I could talk about Deborah forever, but we're just touching a few things because we don't have the time. But we wanted to encourage your hearts tonight that we know that you're powerful. We know that you're strong. And we know that God has anointed you. So just wait for him to open the doors. And when he opens them, serve him like Deborah the honeybee. The sweetness that comes from service and unity and harmony as we serve God together. That's our time. Thank you for tuning in to Heart Ministry Radio Network and the Doors to Your Heart. We're so glad and so grateful that you spend time with us. Visit us often at heartministryradio.com. Go to our HMM TV page and you can see these shows over and over again. God bless you. We'll see you again next time.